This video is sponsored by Deep Cut Studios. For a wide range of fantastic gaming resources such as battle mats, dice trays and pre-painted bases, check out the description below. Hi guys, welcome back to TNG Productions. My name is Tom and we're back with another contrast painting tutorial and this time we're going to be looking at the Astra Militarum and specifically the Cadian Shock Troops. Now this painting tutorial is designed for people like me who aren't particularly the most confident at painting, who want a quick and easily replicatable results using the Citadel contrast range and a little bit of dry brushing. So. As you can see at the start, we've got our trooper and we have primed him using the Wraith Bone Spray, making sure that we do it in a decent temperature, not too cold, not too hot, and get a nice even coating, making sure we've got that nice smooth surface for the contrast paints to go over. Now, once we've got that undercoated, we're going to be starting by using a character size brush. Now, I'm using the Kalinsky Masterclass that comes with the uh, free, it's the free one that comes with the Army Painter set. You could use a character brush or a detail brush, whatever you want to use. And we're going to start with the Gilliman Flesh Contrast Paint. We're going to start with lighter colours and then work our way to darker. So, I'm just going to go around the features, making sure I get into all the nooks and crannies. You might want to do a second coat around the nose and the eyes, but essentially just make sure we get the hands and the face nicely detailed. Now if you make a mistake at any point, do not worry. You can use the Wraith Bone from the pot just to tidy up any areas, but because it's the Gilliman, it's relatively inoffensive and you can paste over it. So making sure that we get an even surface, it's not blotching in any areas. Next, we're going to go on to the fatigues, and I've used Agarosh Dunes for this one. Now, you might wish to use Screaming Skull, and actually at the end of this tutorial, I'll show you what that looks like. But I'm going to use Agarosh Dunes because it's slightly more of a golden brown colour, and this will go on everything that is underneath that iconic green armour. So as I was saying, making sure we get a nice even coating, that it doesn't pull in areas. We continue to pull the paint around so we haven't got any blotchy spots. Agarosh Dunes is a little bit notorious that if you just slop it on, it can leave kind of brown spots. You don't particularly want that unless you're going for some weird, funky kind of camo pattern. Now, Games Workshop always say one thick coat with contrast. Just completely ignore them. If you want to have a look at my five top tips video, that will uh, encourage you to ignore it. Go with a nice, smooth tone. Treat it almost like you would a wash. Now, onto the armour. You might think we would use the Militarum green. You know, it's got the name. Uh, but actually, we're going to use Creed Camo because it's slightly more of a darker green. The Militarum green is quite a light green tone and it looks quite cartoonish. So I'm going to use Creed Camo and even that is quite light. Now, this is going to go on the helmet, the gun and the shoulder pads and the grenades and things on the back of the trooper. Now, this is another one that actually goes on beautifully well. But just check when you're putting the paint on that before it dries that you're getting a nice even coverage, especially on those shoulder pads. Contrast paints don't like flat surfaces, big flat surfaces. So as you can see me applying it to the shoulder here, just make sure I've got enough on the brush to spread it around, but I'm avoiding it blotching up in any areas. And you can see, it's still quite a light colour. We will bring that down in a second, but that's pretty much our base colours down. So Black Templar is going to be used next. It's my favourite of the contrast paints. It's this beautiful colour for leather. I'm going to be using it for the patches and the troops, but again, you may want to use snake bite leather. So at the end of this tutorial, again, the trooper that has got the uh, skeleton horde on his fatigues will also have snake bite leather on his pouches, just so you can compare and contrast and see what you want to use for your own. But I'm going to use the black here because it's nice and easy to dry brush it a little bit later. So going over the boots, making sure we get a nice even coverage. This gives this beautiful kind of like worn weather look. It's almost like a grey when it dries, which is really nice. And if you want something a bit deeper, of course, you can either put a uh, black ink over it, a black wash, or you can just put a second coat of the paint over the top. So we're moving on to our last kind of real base colour here, which is going to be Basilicanum Grey, and that is for the gun barrel and any of the metallic areas. Now you could use metallic paint, something like uh, Iron Breaker or Lead Belcher, but if we're going with the contrast paint, this is a nice kind of generic metallic colour. It goes quite nice with this video's purpose in the sense of like, you know, you get as many contrast paints out as you can. And it's a really, really simple paint to use. You do actually have to put this one a little bit thicker because it's actually quite a thin grey as it goes on, and it does have quite a... I don't know if it's a thin or a thick viscosity, but either way, uh, you need to get a decent coverage. Now, you might notice the troop looks a bit cartoony and bright, so we're going to darken him down a little bit by using two of uh, the Citadel washes. So, Agrax Earthshade is a brown wash, and that is going to go over the fatigues. It could go over the blacks as well if you wanted to dart them down. Now, this isn't a particularly thick wash. This is just making sure it's got coverage over the trooper. You can see me rotating. There's no big pools of splodged on. Just going over, and that will darken that down beautifully. And for the green, we're going to be using Beal Tan Green. Hopefully, I've pronounced that right. Uh, Beal Tan Green will be a nice kind of foresty green wash that won't completely nullify the work we've done with Creed Camo. It just brings it down an octave. I'm using all the fancy words today. It brings it down a tone, shall we say. 
um, into the colour that the Cadians have. Looking at a lot of the artwork, the Cadians actually have relatively dark armour, and we can always dry brush it to have a bit of contrast in a second. So that's going to go on all of our metallic areas, and we're going to need to leave those areas to dry for a little while, because as with the contrast paint, just leave it to dry before you go on to the next area. So in the meantime, I'm going to have a go at doing the base. Now my basing is really simple. I use the Sterling Mud texture paint. I put Agrax Earthshade wash over it, and I dry brush it with Bane Blade, Bane, Bane Blade Brown. Oh, I almost got through a video without messing one up. Bane Blade Brown, and you can see you get a nice little kind of dirt-ish texture there. Now, last paint we're going to use for the kind of areas that have been undercoated is Apothecary White, and that is kind of a grey white colour, and that's for the winged eagles that are on the gun and the helmet. You might actually want to do two coats of this because it's a hint of grey. So you might want to put it on, let it dry, do a second one. I've only done one coat here, so you can have a look and see if you like that. If it's not got enough definition within the wings, you can do a second one. So anyway, we're on to the dry brushing. I'm going to use a small dry brush from uh, Army Painter, and I'm going to be using Yushabti Bone. And I'm going to get most of the paint off the brush, and I'm going to very, very lightly dry brush against the grain, as it were, against the features. Always less is more with dry brushing. Put a little bit on on your brush, go against it. If you're not happy, you can then go over in a bit more detail. You could do the blacks and uh, areas of the gun as well if you want to. It's not that big a deal. It's specifically for the fatigues. And you can see you get a beautiful little highlight on the raised areas. And we're going to do exactly the same with the green. Now, this one you need to be slightly more careful because moot green, as you can see, is quite a bright colour and you don't want to be getting that on his fingers or on the fatigue. So I'm very likely going to go over just the highest areas of his armour, such as the helmet, the shoulder pads, the grenades, and the little bits that are on his shins, making sure that I go very gently against the raised areas. And if I think I've got too much paint on my brush, just wiping some more off on some tissue and going back a second time, just gently building those highlights up so I don't have a big green splodge you know somewhere I want camo because it's quite hard to remove after that but you can see you get a beautiful highlight tone brightens the green back up again where we've used the wash and adds a nice highlight on the edges so here you can see I've just added some transfers and a tuft on the base and it's a really quick paint job this like you know excluding drying time this is within 25 to 30 minutes per trooper this one here you can see I've used skeleton horde on the fatigues it's a little bit lighter and I've used snake bite leather on the uh, pads and satchels so you can make a choice I don't think there's much difference between the agros dunes and the snake bite and the uh, skeleton horde this guy here agros dunes next one along uh, snake uh, skeleton horde so the fatigue isn't really much different it depends how strong you want the highlighting to be I think it's much in a muchness to be honest um, but if you want that slightly deeper color use agros if you want that slightly lighter color you use skeleton horde but yeah batched up these troopers really quickly I think I got most of them done within an hour in that case uh, excluding the drying times and they're really nice they're ready to go and I think they're perfectly acceptable for a tabletop standard so hopefully that tutorial has been useful for you guys if you've got any questions pop them in the comments below and I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching our content. It means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.